What's going on everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton here at Data Dash, and today is August 20th of 2017. So as you all know if you watch my channel, I love getting feedback in the comments below my videos and in my live streams about which corner token I should cover next on my channel. And you all have extensively asked day by day more and more about ICOs that have hit the cryptocurrency market. But there's been one in particular that I've gotten requested a lot, I've been personally interested to cover, and not to mention one of my recent Patreons asked me to cover. So I knew it was time I finally covered this famed ERC20 token, and it is no other than Aragon. So what is Aragon? aiming to achieve, what's its long-term ambitions, what's the target market it's reaching for is the team and the tech there. I'm going to be answering and covering all of those. However, as always, as you know on this channel, we've got to start off with the numbers. So let's jump right into the analysis. First off, we can see here the market cap is looking very steady, sitting around $91 million. It's at a perfect level. It's not one of those really small, small caps that have very uh, high volatility. And we also know that it's not a mid cap sitting around 200 million, where it's a little more well formed and a little less return for the long term. So I think sitting around 100 million dollars is a nice market cap for Argon, and I think fundamentally it's worth more than where it's at right now. We can also see the volume right here for the past 24 hours has been pretty steady. Uh, I always tell you all to, if you're going to invest in trade in anything, try to invest in trade in cryptocurrencies that have over $500,000 in volume. And Argon checks that off perfectly, so we can feel comfortable investing and trading in it. Then we can also see that the circulating supply is 33.6 million out of 39.6 million for the total supply. So I think this is good, way more than half of the total supply is already in circulation. So, so long as the total supply doesn't expand or at least the max supply, uh, I think that we can uh, see low rates of inflation on this and I think this will be good. So that being said, before we jump into the fundamental analysis, I, can, I just wanted to really point out before we do a technical analysis later, that Argon has been maintaining the majority of its value from its ICO. It's actually been going to new uh, higher levels ever since it launched. So I think this is actually showing that it really does have the fundamental backing behind it. So that being said, let's go into why that might be and why a lot of people are optimistic on Argon. I sure know I am. And I gotta say, the first thing that made me optimistic is always, I love a beautiful website when it comes to cryptocurrencies. If you can't take the time to build a great website, I really don't want to take the time to look into it. I mean, that's just a very you know fair case. And I think that Argon has done an amazing job as an ERC20 token of developing a wonderful website stating what they want to do. And I love the first two words they state, unstoppable organizations, because it instantly tells me that they want to help organizations come to the blockchain. It wants to help build structure without borders and intermediaries. So. What does that look like? What is Argon more specifically trying to do? And well, let's dive into it and take a little bit of a look at it. And as you all know, we already covered that this has been a launched ICO back in May, and it's had a very successful ICO launch so far. So basically speaking, what Argon is trying to do in very simple terms, I can read, you know, right off the script of the screen, but I want to give you all a very easy to understand kind of broken down version of what Argon's trying to do. It's trying to bring uh, a judiciary nature to the blockchain. We know uh, that blockchains are decentralized. You know, it's a cool feature. It's, the, it's a cool fact that we can bring organizations as well, as well as people onto the blockchain, and we don't have to worry about, you know, centralized organizations. However, for centralized organizations who are trying to use the blockchain and use it efficiently, the sense of decentralization to the full scale can sometimes be a little bit of a roadblock to get true efficiency on the blockchain and see it firsthand for corporate entities, organizations, or communities. And I think that this is where Argon is really going to fix that issue. Argon tries to bring structure. It tries to bring a sense of rule of law to organizations to make sure that they work efficiently and to work out any issues that might happen on the blockchain. So it's really interesting. And we can see here it's an ERC20 token powered by the Ethereum blockchain. So it's the first uh, decentralized autonomous organization that's active goal, that its active goal from the get-go is to build digital jurisdiction. Pretty much what we've been reiterating, trying to build a sense of rule of law and make things easy for entrepreneurs, organizations, and investors to operate on the blockchain. I'm telling you all, I think a lot of people might not see the value in this right now because it's so early on on the project itself, and we're also seeing the early stages of blockchain technology. We haven't seen organizations, corporate entities come onto the blockchain in mass. And when they do, they're gonna need that structure that Argon software is providing. So 
as you can see, uh, the insight looks like it ends here. However, if we click on read more, we get taken to this page where they give a little more information on the crowd sale. They did a very nice job, raised plenty of Ethereum, and they also talk a little bit about uh, where the funds went as well. I think that's very good to be transparent about what it's going towards. You can see that the mass majority went towards development and then operations, marketing, legal etc. So I think that this was, it's really nice to see that they're being transparent about it. It's not a, you know, pump and dump uh, ICO. It's, it's something that's trying to be taken seriously and is actually starting to uh, present its technology. So what is the function of the token? What is it aiming to do? Well, the token gives a lot of power through the network. It practically allows you to use the Argon network, but there's so many cool things. They've got a wonderful list here. Change subscription fees and minting rate, deciding which services to provide on the Argon network, voting on capital allocations or investments, self upgrade the network, and so much more. There is endless possibilities with the Argon network in the sense of structuring organizations. And the cool thing you should always keep in mind is that Argon is very prone towards making their, inf their software open source. So people can go out there and propose ideas on how to improve Argon. And once the team finds a good enough amount of improvements or different ways you can add structure towards your organizations on the Argon network, they'll implement it towards the software and allow people who use its technology to utilize those new features. So they're consistently upgrading and making it better. And I love of that. It shows that you have an active team behind your technology. Now, if we scroll down here, we can see that there's some really nice documents laid out. Still love on the website. Can't say anything bad about it. Uh, we can see that they've got a nice one pager. So if you want a good summary before buying, I'd at least recommend you read the one pager. And you can see it has a multiple variety of languages there and uh, English, Chinese, and Russian. We can also see that there's a white paper and a development plan. So if you're really thinking about making a long-term investment in Argon and you really want to build that extra sense of trust and understanding, I recommend reading the white paper. The white paper is very nice, sat through and read a decent amount of it. And then the development plan is actually pretty nice as well. So definitely go check those out if you get the chance, especially if you're going to be putting an investment in it. So that being said, before I jump into the team, there was one thing on their about page that I really liked. If you're still not getting a good visualization of what Argon's trying to achieve, this is a perfect picture. They're not trying to stop people and censor people from the blockchain and its flexibility. What they're trying to do is make sure that people on the blockchain who are a part of organizations, communities, or corporate entities stay organized and they follow under certain sets of rules. So I think this is a perfect visualization if you want to see that kind of objective for Argon in the long term. And then now we go down to the team as always, and I tell you all, it's good to have a good development team behind them, and this team is no exception. It's relatively small on the developer scale. There's really only two individuals. However, Lewis and George have quite impressive resumes behind them. You know, I don't think you need me to read them, really. You can see that Lewis was an underage European programmer, uh, actually the best underage programmer in Europe and in 2011. We can see he was on the Forbes 30 under 30. I mean, the list goes on and on for these guys. And then George, of course, as well, has worked on a multitude of iOS apps and has delivered on a lot of awesome winners on the App Store. So I think this is awesome. You can also check out interviews with them. You can check out their Twitters, their GitHubs to see the work that they've done. I think they've got very impressive resumes behind them, but they're not left alone in the sense of achieving their goals. They have a long list of partners, a lot of these big names, Shape Shift, uh, Economy, and coin fund being the biggest to me and you can see that they have a great list of advisors here uh, jake is a huge guy in the cryptocurrency space and if you see jake on the team that's pretty good i, I know i noticed that one of my viewers speaker who's one of my big fans has always pointed out that if you see jake on something you get two thumbs up instantly but he's a, he's a definitely a big name and helping a lot of uh, individual projects as an advisor You've got Kenny on here and Brayton Williams as well. So a lot of people from VC teams and a lot of big crypto names. So definitely looks like a winner here, folks. I got to say, Oregon has left an impressive uh, kind of resume for all of us to see, whether it be their dev team, the tech that is actually already available out there and ready to use in its sense of uh, being out released in alpha. And we can see that they have a wonderful website that gives us that information. And it seems, now that we go towards more of a technical analysis, that it's been maintaining the majority of its value. Uh, not to mention, we have to keep in mind, Bitcoin has been going up as well. So that's why the chart shows a little bit of a downtrend. However, nonetheless, it's basically holding towards its uh, ICO Bitcoin valuation, which is pretty impressive with how much Bitcoin's gone up. So I think Argon has kind of gone down through a cool down period. And I think most ICOs experience this. However, I gotta say, 
as I adjust the chart here, I love how the selling pressure is slowing here. And we're seeing a lot more optimism and some volume pour into Aragon. So I think if you're at these levels and you want to make either a swing trade for the next few weeks, or if you wanted to hold Aragon for a long term, though I'm no financial advisor, I think that Aragon is a really good candidate. It's something that I'm considering, I'm watching right now on my personal radar, not only in the short term, but in the long term as well. And I really think that as Aragon continues to get uh, you know, adopted in the long term, it will continue to go up. One of the big examples I can give you right off the bat, I'm going to end this video off with, is I did a recent video on District OX, which is aiming to build districts, almost kind of like a decentralized a network of communities together, and they've been looking for a system to structure it. Well, the District OX team did not stutter at all, and they instantly chose the Aragon platform and the Aragon network to help govern those districts. So, it's cool to see Ethereum technologies linking past one another, and to see Aragon becoming so sex, uh, successful off the bat really makes me happy, because I think the ambitions they're trying to achieve are not only necessary, they're ambitious, but they're definitely a really interesting addition towards the blockchain. So, that being said, that's my coverage on Aragon. I'd love to hear what you all think in the comments below. Do you think Aragon will continue to be adopted? Do you think it will attract corporate entities and organizations onto the blockchain with more structure? Or do you think it's going to be a dud? Do you think it can't really get adopted? Or do you think the technology is lacking in any sense? I'd love to hear what you all think in the comments below. And if you've got other, another coin or token you want me to cover, feel free to leave a comment on that as well. But that's it for the video, everyone. And I'll see you all in the next video. Stay tuned.